last time you had to sign a document and then fax it back to someone else? DocuSign is trying to make that a thing of the past. The company allows users to add a digital signature to things like contracts and then submit them electronically, completely eliminating the need to print out and sign. DocuSign counts Google Ventures among its backers and just closed a $55 million Series D round of funding. Our editor-at-large, Corey Johnson, is back with more on this. Corey? Yeah, Emily, I find Keith Kretcher a fascinating guy, not just for what he's doing with DocuSign right now or his involvement at, I don't know, Purdue or Angie's List or all these other ventures of his, but because of where he came from. Uh, Keith uh, started one of the, the brightest lights of the dot-com era, Reba Networks. It was a $40 billion company before a very dot-com-like uh, collapse in the stock price, at least, for a later acquisition. So when you see him setting up DocuSign to be a big company, when you see what kinds of investors are getting into this company, well, it shows you just how they're thinking. We're accelerating our business almost across the board in terms of product development, in terms of expanding internationally, and also in terms of customer focus on our key verticals. And uh, key verticals being what? Uh, it's anywhere from healthcare to insurance to finance, telcos, you name it. Is this principally about international expansion that, that you want to get to here, or, or is it within sort of the U.S. where your strength has been? Well, it's pretty much across the board. DocuSign, uh, we do business in 188 countries. We've got about 20 million unique users. We're putting on about 60,000 a day, but it's about accelerating that international So you're getting 60,000 users a day? 60,000 unique users a day. What, what's the repeat user base like for your business? Because I feel like, you know, I always think of your business, and I know it's, it's, it's a lot more than just mortgages or just car loans or whatever. Right, right. But, you know, I, I don't get too many mortgages, <laughs> right. I'm happy to say. Right. Uh, it, you know, I would use this, this service once in a long time. Is that typical of your users? Well, you know, it's, that, that's the beauty is that you might use it in a real estate uh, transaction. You might use it in an insurance transaction. Then you might be in your company and use it for a sales contract. Um, or you might use it for your child's permission slip. How many transactions per user are typical? Uh, it varies across the board. So for some of our enterprise customers, they're literally using it every day for multiple contracts. And then you may have one of our consumer uh, users that may only use it once or twice a month. Oh, but even that often. Uh, all right, so big investment here. Interestingly, in, the, in your first round, your last round back in 2010, you got an investment from Salesforce. Yes. Now an investment from Google. Yes. Uh, I think this is really interesting because it sort of talks about how your business exists within the coopetition world. But what do these strategic investors bring to your company? Well, I think, um, for example, Google brings to DocuSign a breadth of experience in terms of scaling from the consumer to the enterprise, uh, the user interface, I mean, uh, the viral consumer adoption. All right, now you've been through this IPO, build a company, or build a company, take it public, work your way out as a public company. I wonder, uh, at what point is it appropriate for a company to raise money, and how much do you sell? It seems like these are the really hard decisions. Well, you know, I think that depends on, on every single um, company. But our objective at DocuSign is to build a great long-term sustaining company. We look at an IPO as just a financing event. Well, I guess more of my question is when you're doing a round, how much of the company do you sell? And how do you weigh, I realize these are the big questions, but how do you, you know, you've been through this before. Will right. Share some of your experience with Right, them? right. You know, I, 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 I think... Um, you know, if you, if you want to get some off the table, you just do a, a little bit along the way. I believe you should do it blindly. What do you mean? I, I mean, whether the stock is going up or down. So, so regardless of the valuation you get, even as a private, why do anything? Uh, you know, it, in some cases, some people need, you, you know, money, some, right. some liquidity. In some cases, you don't. So uh, employee liquidity, is that more important, or other investor liquidity? Like, what kind of things do you think about when you make these decisions? Uh, when, when we think about, what, taking a company public, or? What, what are you doing a private round? Oh, like, when, like you just did. Oh, well, we, for doing a, a, a private round, um, it's all about getting a great strategic group of investors. So you look in DocuSign, the investors, you have the National Association of Realtors, you have Salesforce, you have Google Ventures, you have SAP Ventures, you have Kleiner Perkins, you have Excel. 
um, you know, these are the top of the top, and and these are great partnerships, and they bring a tremendous amount of value to DocuSign. So you really, you're bringing great minds, and not just to, to absolutely tens, tens of millions of dollars. Absolutely. Really, a, a top tier list of investors, investors who have seen dramatically great results in the past, and and who knows, maybe DocuSign will have the kind of results that Ariba Networks uh, had back in the dot-com day. Emily? Thanks, Corey. Up next, mobile payments.